Uh, like I would like to give a very good comparison of these tools and uh, I would say it will be um, a little bit fun to use ADF. I like to uh, like I have really, really enjoyed working in integration service for a period of time, even I'm enjoying working with ADF now. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, let's see the comparison. So mainly uh, what uh, initially uh, my understanding uh, was uh, SSS integration services is a ETL tool and ADF is ELT tool. Uh, <clears throat> like ETL is extract, transform and load. ELT is extract, load and transform. So even in the case of SSS, um, like people use you can use ADF even for ETL and ELT. You can, uh, like even in the SSIS, we used to do ELT because we used to, over a period of time when the data uh, size grows, we don't want to do transformation while extracting the data. We used to extract the data and load it into staging and then transform and load to the data warehouse or the data mark. Even in the ADF, it is advised to do the same way. Like yeah, yeah, we always talk about ET, ETL uh, is extract transform load, but ELT is extract load transform. You, even though if it is a ETL tool, that does not mean you have to do ETL. You can do ELT as well. So there is no much difference. You can use both tools for both of them. So what is the uh, uh, difference? Uh, or like what is Azure Data Factory? So it is a cloud-based tool, uh, allows you to create data-driven workflows in the cloud for orchestrating and automating data movement and data transformation. So what is that uh, like, uh, do you think is the main difference between ADF and SSS? Let's say in the uh, ADF, uh, like the capability of ADF is it can uh, like you can work on big data directly in the ADF. Even you can connect to HDFS from the SSS, but let's say like I, I don't want, um, I'll, 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 like there are a lot and lot of technologies in the case of uh, uh, big data now, there is um, HDFS, there is PART, uh, there is Delta Lake, there is uh, so many new files like Avro, Parquet, um, uh, like, I, you, you, like I have never seen so many uh, types of sources uh, because all these types of sources are created to reduce the uh, size uh, of the uh, consumption because people are extracting GVs and TVs of data every day and they're trying to store it. But if at all, if you store it in a compressed format, it will be very, very um, good for you um, because the less the consumption, the better. So that's why uh, we're getting new and new data formats. In the case of Azure Data Factory, while processing the data, like in the case of SSS, it's, there is no partitions that happen while reading and writing the data to the destination. But in the case of Azure Data Factory, you can partition the data. So that, that's where um, uh, the processing time that takes in Azure Data Factory is very, it will trim to a very big extent. And you can, um, I would like to show something um, in the Azure Data Factory. Um, so you can understand that. So I open the Azure Data Factory over here. So if if I have to uh, create a data flow. Let's say uh, 
Okay, if I have to create this and if I have to look at this, this is what I wanted to show you. Like, do I want to like if the data source is very huge, if I use the partition technique, it will split the data into different partitions. That's what HDF uh, is used to do, hard distributed file system. It will partition the data, process the data, and store the data. So even in the case of source, like while extracting the data, you can partition the data. Even while loading the data, even in that also, you can partition the data. So this is, I would say this is a very, very um, good thing that you can do um, in the case of um, uh, Azure Data Factory. I would say it's very, very, uh, uh, yeah, like very much useful uh, uh, in the case of Azure Data Factory. This is what I just wanted to show how uh, the partition works over here, like you can set the dynamic partitions and you can use what type of partitions you want, which will be very useful over here. So um, uh, this is a simple comparison between the SSS and Azure Data Factory. Uh, left one is, uh, this is for the SSS, it is covered by that, right? Yeah, so in when it comes to volume, uh, SSS can work uh, with the medium volume data, but ADF can work with both medium and high volume data. So uh, SSS, uh, ca can you not work with streaming? I would say you can work with streaming with any tool, but uh, based on the, uh, uh, I would say it is not recommended to do the streaming in the case of SSS because it is not that powerful but it is uh, adf is very powerful you can uh, say for uh, let's say like um, if i want to run a data flow in adf i can select how many cores that is required to run particular that particular data flow which actually gives an edge for the adf like i can say these many cores like if if i am processing tvs of data then i can say i would need like 32 cores or uh, like 64 cores and, uh, and all those stuff in the case of ADS. This this feature is not enabled in the case of SSS. So that makes um, it uh, not to use the streaming. So can SSS work with unstructured data? No, it can't work in unstructured data. In the ADF, you can work with unstructured data. So uh, SSIS is an on-premise tool. This is a UI-based tool. ADF is a UI-based tool. Uh, hybrid data, both are hybrid, both are good. Uh, hybrid data platforms. Do you need to purchase hardware uh, for SSIS? Yes, you need to purchase hardware. You need to have a VM. You need to have a license for the SQL. You need to have a license for, uh, license for uh, so many other things. Uh, like if at all, if you want to have, um, uh, like let's say SDFC connectivity, if you want to, you, you have to install a lot of OLED, VOD, VC providers to connect to multiple uh, systems um, in the case of SSS. Uh, it's, I'm not saying it is bad or good. I'm saying like uh, you have to do all this on your own, but in the case of cloud, nothing is required. Loading pa pattern, they say extract, transform, load, how both can be done, used for extract, load, transfer. Uh, this 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 is not I don't agree with this so uh, how development tools uh, you used uh, SQL server data tools uh, visual studio uh, component uh, for here as I shown you it's a browser um, you can do the development over there in the browser GUI interface both are good and the pricing factor uh, uh, is this is the license and uh, the, you will have to face the hassle of upgrading the things as and when you get uh, like Microsoft stop providing support for the existing 
uh, version and uh, this is pay as you go and uh, there is uh, some concept of reserving the money and you can play around within that uh, reserved money as well in the case of um, adf so uh, So I would like to give uh, a little bit of comparison. Uh, so before that, uh, I would like to show uh, in the case of uh, ADF, how uh, things look, how easy it is uh, for in the case of ADF. So let's say I, I would try to create a new pipeline. See, uh, the amount of things that you can do over here so what all you can do, uh, let's say you can connect to Power Query. Uh, this is a Power BI tool. Uh, let's say if any data analyst, he wants to automate the things, you can connect directly to the Power Query. You can use the query and then you can just schedule it over here. You can look at this. You can schedule all the machine learning jobs uh, that you are going to create, a uh, data scientist or someone in area animation. Uh, you can schedule the machine learning thing. So here, this is iterations and conditions, but you can look at this. You can connect to streaming, any streaming, not the Spark streaming. Uh, and you can connect to uh, not only the Spark streaming, uh, you can connect to Spark, Spark streaming, you can connect to Pig, MapReduce, Hive, any of them. And this is generally mainly for uh, uh, this this general uh, tab is mainly for ADF features and uh, data lake analytics. This is the Cosmos DB. This is the NoSQL DB. This is connection to the NoSQL DB. Uh, uh, in the case of Azure, you know, and uh, when it comes to this wonderful tool, DataBricks, um, uh, where you create Python notebooks or any notebooks, and you want to just schedule over here. You can do that and you can schedule any batch service, batch script over here. And a lot of things I would say that you can do in the case of this flexibility, um, this thing I never seen, uh, um, uh, like I, you have, to, you don't get this flexibility. You don't get to connect to Databricks. You don't get to connect to HD insights or machine learning thing. Look at amount of, uh, flexibility that it has provided over here. Like you have a uh, machine learning, you can uh, just uh, create it and then you can just schedule it over here. You have HD inside, you have loaded the data to Hive or Pig, uh, you have a Spark data, you can just schedule it here. So that is the amount of flexibility that a cloud tool is offering for you that's what they say here right like you can um, you will you can do the streaming you can uh, do unstructured and semi-structured uh, data reading and transformation so that's how it is so in the like i would like to uh, give a simple comparison um, between the ssis and azure data factory so in the case of ssis we used to call the thing uh, call any um, control flow activity anything the, in a package uh, and now it is called as a data pipeline or here in azure data factory don't get confused what is a data pipeline what is and all the stuff so we uh, like connection manager uh, uh, here is a data pipeline thing connection manager is what is called as a link service in the case of azure data factory wherein you go here link services you set up a connection string uh, to uh, different uh, sources out there and uh, if you could see like i have connected to uh, I'll uh, file in my uh, computer system. I have uh, um, like installed integ SSS integration uh, runtime, self-hosted integration runtime, so that it allows me to connect to uh, uh, things which is outside of the cloud. And the sources is same. Uh, you call a destination as sync in the case of Azure Data Factory. And uh, in the case of uh, SSS, you used to call control flow uh, activity again. It's not just control flow. 
Uh, here it is a 